I'm Molly Superthorpe. Welcome to my channel where I offer bite-sized tutorials and demonstrations in hand lettering and digital art and upload a brand new video every Friday. Today I'm going to teach you how to install brushes and files in Procreate. Among other things, you'll learn how to work with zip downloads, brush sets, color swatch files, and Procreate files. This lesson is actually one of the 38 lessons from my newest online course, Procreate for Absolute Beginners. If you enjoy this lesson and want to see 37 more lessons about various Procreate functions, I urge you to enroll in the course. Procreate for Absolute Beginners is a class on Skillshare, which you can watch with a Skillshare Premium membership. To get a 14-day free trial to Skillshare Premium and access all the thousands of classes the platform has to offer, just click the link in the description below. Procreate brushes come in two different file types. You have single individual brushes, which have the file extension .brush. Then you have brush sets or brush libraries, which have the file extension .brush set. When you see a brush set, it means that that one single file contains more than one brush. Oftentimes it's a lot more than one. For example, this is my Calligraphy Composition Maker brush pack. It contains lots of brushes, dozens of them in fact, but if you were to get this and install it in Procreate, it would be one single brush set file, which you would import and then all the brushes would appear organized into their own little folder here. Individual brushes and brush sets are installed in exactly the same way. Very often when you download brushes from an online marketplace or an individual product creator, they're going to come as a zipped folder. That's because you usually get additional files along with the brushes, such as PDF instructions, sample graphics, licensing details, etc. If that's the case and you find yourself with a zipped file, you'll first need to download it to a place where you can unzip it and then make sure the relevant files are in the cloud, where you can then access them via Procreate. Obviously, the most convenient method would be to save your zipped file directly in the cloud to begin with. I offer a bunch of free downloads with Procreate brushes and practice sheets and things like that for lettering artists. So I'm here on that page to use it as an example because I'm one of those product creators who provides zipped files. So let's download my lettering marker brush. Now it's already done, so it's asking where I wanna open it. I'll click open in, and then I'll say save to files. Here I can navigate to exactly where in my files I want to place it. So I have a whole folder of brushes. I'll put it right there. Here I have my zipped file and all I have to do is tap it once and files automatically unzips it for me. Once it's unzipped, the zipped file itself remains and you get a brand new folder with the same title. That folder contains the items that were in your zipped folder. Now, no matter what cloud service you have, it's going to be very important that the icon to access that cloud app appears here in your iPad's bottom toolbar. First off, I wanna note that the iCloud icon is actually a blue folder and the app itself is called Files, which can understandably be a little bit confusing. I personally use both Google Drive and iCloud. So here in my toolbar, I have my Drive and my iCloud or Files app icons. Now, if the icon of your cloud app is not yet in this bottom toolbar, we're going to have to add it before we install and procreate. To add an app to your bottom toolbar, you're going to press and hold it then say edit home screen. Your apps will begin to jiggle. You can then just simply drag and drop your app into the toolbar. I'll remove this one though for now. And then to make them stop jiggling, just tap anywhere. We have to be in a Procreate file to install brushes. You can't be in your gallery, so just make sure that you open any file before we get started with installation. Next, I will lightly swipe up from the bottom of my screen, not so much that I return to my home screen, and this toolbar will appear. Now I'm going to take my preferred cloud app. I'm using iCloud since that's where I just saved my brush, and I'm going to drag it up to the side of my screen. I can choose the left or the right side. Now I'm in split screen view and I can toggle the ratio of my split screen using the center toggle bar. My files app opened to the last place that I was using it, namely in my brushes folder, but you can still use the navigation here to navigate to your preferred folder. Now in Procreate, I just open my brush palette. It used to be that you had to drag and drop a brush file over into your brushes library, but it's actually even easier now because files can detect a Procreate file. And all you have to do is tap it now once 
and that marker got instantly added into a folder called imported. Had this been a brush set, I could have tapped it and it would have popped over here as its own brush library. It wouldn't be in the imported folder, it would have its own folder. Now I can close my files app by just dragging the center toggle all the way off to the side and I can test out my new marker. Now these same steps work whether you're using iCloud, Google Drive, or Dropbox. You can use the same split screen function with any of those three cloud apps. These steps also work for color palettes. Procreate color palette files end with the file extension .swatches. So I just come over to my Procreate palette library, this last tab here, and I'll just scroll down to the bottom because when I add a new swatch palette, it's gonna add to the very bottom. And now all I do is just tap one of these swatch palettes. And there you go, it appears right there. I can now drag this and move it anywhere in my library that I would like. And finally, the last type of file that you may need to import into Procreate are Procreate files themselves. These files end with the file extension .procreate. Installation of these is the same as the brushes and swatches, except that you have to do it in the gallery, not within a file. You can either do it in your main gallery or within a stack. So here in my cloud, I have navigated to a folder where I have a Procreate file, and now I can just tap it, or I could drag it, but I can just tap it, and it appears right here in my main gallery as the first file. If you ever have multiple files that you wanna import into your gallery, you can also come over here and click Select, choose all the ones you want, and then tap and drag them over. If you enjoyed this lesson, please use the link in the description below to enroll in my Procreate for Absolute Beginners course and unlock your 14-day free trial to Skillshare Premium. Thank you for following along today, and I'll see you back here next Friday.